we go like this, I think that's done. Brilliant. Um, right, so we're going to pass over to Jane um, from George Elliot Hospital, uh, and I will get your presentation up for you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, that should have been updated there. That is Becky Millwood, our patient experience manager. Um, I am the voluntary um, services manager here at George Elliott now. So I just wanted to talk to you a bit today about, um, you know, but I can just tell you a little bit about the hospital. Um, we provide a range of services, including urgent and emergency care, surgical, medical women's and children's diagnostic and therapeutic care. We serve a population of over 3000 and we provide a range of community services and um, volunteering opportunities in nearly all of these departments, um, wards and services. There are sorry, there are volunteering opportunities in nearly all of these wards and services at George Elliott. I mean, we um, are looking to to support the hospital's priorities at the moment, which are um, Improving patient and carer experience, improving, improving flow and reducing seasonal pressures. For example, we will start to support the flu vaccine program, supporting staff well-being and releasing their time to care. Um, an example of would be that is having a nice garden to relax in at break times or taking on some routine tasks such as um, collecting and delivering items. You know, it takes the, um, the, the, the staff don't have to do that. So it, it frees their time to care. Um, we also try to help support um, the, the hospital in restoring services and increasing their capacity for elective care, you know, trying to get back to the situation we were in before COVID, um, you know, to make sure that, you know, everything can, can uh, all the waiting lists and people are, can be scheduled for their routine operations. I mean, as you know, it's been an exceptionally difficult year and we've had people from all walks of life have taken the time to volunteer within the trust, making a huge yeah. difference to the communities and the hospitals. But what has been more significant this year, and we've, we've already touched on it earlier, is the scale and diversity of volunteering as this country was challenged by COVID-19. And we want to build on this success. So... Um, we've some of the ideas that we've we've worked with some of the roles that we've got which are task based are on the screen right now so in, in pharmacy runners hospital responders um, we've got volunteers on wards clinical responders which are provided um, by St John's Ambulance I think we're going to hear about those later on in the presentation today um, there's a there's some specialist roles as well, which are um, Macmillan and um, end of life companions, which we, we utilize volunteers that have got lived experience and they want to share, um, share that with, with others to help them on their own individual journeys. Um, well, I mean, I can, we've got some feedback from, from, from the volunteers, what they actually say about their experience here, which, um, uh, it is along the lines of provides a fantastic um, and routine and is rewarding to end the day being able to look back knowing you've helped somebody and they report that the atmosphere is always warm and welcoming um, they enjoy meeting other people I mean the gain for volunteers is um, it is about it's not work experience as such but it does give you structure and it can be a route into employment as the skills learned and experience gains whilst volunteering are transferable. Um, for example, um, you know, you'd become aware of a hospital as a workplace, communicating with different groups of people, which gives you a confidence in a range of tasks, um, team building and, which, and connecting with like-minded individuals and volunteering together. And we, our list of, um, we've got a, a list of roles which we're currently recruiting to, which is uh, we, got, we, have, we need administrators, meter and greeters, befrienders, discharge buddy and comfort calls. We've, we've, that's a new incentive to help um, when people go home to make sure that they've got everything they need to stay well at home. 
We have delivery driver service, volunteer delivery driver service. We have pharmacy runners. We have people helping on the wards, which is helping during tea rounds and um, helping to promote, um, to start conversations. Um, telephonist, tele uh, sorry, telephonist, we help them, so they support the ward clerks on the really busy wards when, uh, you know, families can't get through. So that's a real, we have really good feedback on that's really helpful. Uh, and not least, and last but not least, sorry, gardeners, which go to maintain the hospital spaces, creating some, you know, really nice sanctuary areas for the staff to take a break, which really has an impact on their, their well-being. So I don't know if there's any, is there one more slide left, I think. So if you need, if you want to apply, um, we, we ask for expressions of interest to volunteering at that address. Uh, sorry, it's volunteering at GEH. And then we have a, a link to our system, which is called Better Impact for you to apply online. There's also a lot of information as well on our website. But we're, we're um, happy to have a chat with anybody who's interested. If the roles are not, you know, we, we try and be as um, bespoke as we can with roles. There are some roles that I've just described earlier that are, we already, we've already got those, but we're always working on new task-based roles. So, some feedback here from staff. Um, I mean, we, we, we get a lot, a lot of positive feedback from staff. Um, here's an example. Um, the volunteers have been invaluable. They're all superstars and I've really helped relieve the pressure. Obviously, this is not from David Beckham. He's not a member of staff. But, um, we, you know, we do have real feedback from staff that are really... Um, praise the volunteers and they're actually real really useful in securing in freeing their time to be able to to care for patients uh, thanks jane is there anything thanks. else you want to add no, just if anybody wants to, uh, you know, an informal chat. I mean, I know that Tina will always also, uh, if you, you can express interest via Carver as well. Um, but you know, you can you can email uh, volunteering at, and we will will you know we can we can contact you and we can have a chat, or you can go through uh, Warwickshire Carver. Where I think we share the opportunities. Ah, thank you very much, Well, So we're going straight on to our next speaker. So I think Carolyn's just arrived. Um, from NHS Cadets and John's Ambulance. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Lovely. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Bear with me. I don't often use Zoom, so I apologise if something really random goes wrong. works. Is there anything happening? No. Can you see that? Yeah, all? yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> That's uh, at least one good news. Right, I'm just going to do a bit of a whirlwind tour through NHS cadets and um, it's quite apt actually coming um, following um, the presentation from George Elliott because um, this program locally is in partnership with with George Elliott Hospital. So I'm going to give you a whirlwind tour and then let you know how you can get involved. So in short, the NHS cadets is a funded program from NHS England Improvement and the idea of it is to engage with young people who have not traditionally entered in health volunteering um, and hopefully that will then lead to something um, more, more in the future. So it's part of our St John Ambulance strategy as well as the NHS long-term plan and also the people's plan. So it's all embedded into why we're trying to engage with more young people and why we're encouraging more volunteers to, to support the programme. 
who are we targeting? So we target young people who are underrepresented within the health ecosystem. So that is basically any young person you would imagine would have a barrier to participation. So you can see on the screen um, that there's quite a long list and it's not an exhausted list either, but we try and um, uh, look at the most popular categories and groups of young people that have been engaging in the programme. So they're the ones that really need the support the most. We have two programmes that we deliver. So we, um, we support young people from 14 to 18. We have our foundation programme, which is a 12 month programme that's delivered 36 weeks. Um, we do a bit of clinical skills and first aid with them. Um, they do volunteering experience at that foundation level and they cover a lot of different topics to help them prepare them for a future in healthcare. And then at our advanced programme, 16 to 18 year olds, run very similar to the foundation pathway, but we do a little bit more in depth um, uh, topics and, and um, overview of volunteering. So they would take on a volunteering position within the NHS to help support them in, in their future. And then you can see that the topics that they cover are a little bit more in depth and around career skills because the idea at that level, we hope that they would eventually take on either entry level work or apprenticeships or anything else. So some of the roles that were mentioned for volunteering with George Elliott, we hope our young people will eventually be doing that as well. So just a little bit about their volunteering, I won't read it all out, but it's just to give you a perspective of what we do with these young people. So um, we hopefully we try and encourage them to have some sort of experience, particularly on that foundation programme. So it doesn't necessarily mean long term volunteering. We just want them to have some sort of experience and be able to understand what it's like to be a part of the NHS. We also encourage more roles um, outside of clinical um, roles because as you will know, the NHS um, is not just a clinical um, employer. They have roles from doing IT to being a porter, cleaner, working on switchboard. You know, there's 350 plus roles. And we're trying to encourage our young people to consider more than just a clinical. So at advanced level, when they become um, a volunteer within the um, within the trust and the NHS, we hope that they will consider other roles, particularly those that, are, that the NHS have gaps for. We recruit young people from different areas. So we recruit them from our target groups. So for example, if they're a young carer or we were encouraging more young carers to be involved, we will go to young carers charities and, and um, services to promote the opportunity to them and it's the same for all the other areas as well so if they are um, part of an LGBT community then we will go to that community to engage and um, recruit them to the program. Um, a little bit about when you, what young people have currently said about the program so some young people have said that it, they wanted an insight to the NHS before pursuing a medical career. And then some also say that they have no idea what they want to do and it's opened their eyes to other opportunities. So I won't go through them all, but in short, it's been able to encourage young people to seek different areas and you know their confidence and skills to be able to do so. Just a little bit of the other elements of the programme. So in short, we have lots of different things going on. We have learning networks, we have our evaluation, um, and we also have a really good team. So you can see all the mugshots here. So this is the project team. So we're a national team and we support all the different programmes across the country. So in terms of what volunteering looks like, 
Um, we actually currently have two paid roles. So we have a paid project lead and a paid youth support worker. That's because we're currently funded to set up the programme and it helps us to get along with that engagement of young people. So the project lead main role is their planning, delivery and supervision. They do administration and further support. And then the youth support, support worker supports that planning delivery and delivers for, to the young people. And then we have our volunteer youth support workers and their main role is just similar to the youth support worker where they help support our young people with the planning and the delivery of the programme. And our Nuneaton programme is um, either going to be delivered at George Elliott or our St John Ambulance building next door. Um, they're going to be delivering on Wednesdays, 6 till 8 p.m. And they're going to be, we're going to have a foundation of 14 to 16 year olds. They're going to currently start online because we're trying to, uh, our best to keep the young people and the um, delivery team safe. Um, but we are planning to do some risk assessments so they can do some face to face delivery, which they're really excited to do. And we're also just about to start this program in the next week or two. So this is a really good time if anybody is interested in volunteering is getting on board. So how to become a volunteer. Um, so I've kind of over, I put an overview of what we're what the requirements are. Um, but the full job description um, is on the website there and I will put that into the chat box so that you can just click on it and go to it. But in short, it's about assisting with that planning and delivery. It's about supporting those young people to make sure they achieve their full potential, widen the horizons, um, working with young people from marginalised backgrounds. So this programme isn't for those young people that can quite happily get along in, into their own uh, volunteering or careers. It's for those that, that, that have that barrier. Um, and then encouraging young people to take uh, take up opportunities in volunteering. So it's volunteers for volunteering um, and helping assist with the recruitment. And we're just looking for good English and maths, knowledge of online or face to face delivery with young people, good knowledge of IT. And there's some other things on the full job description, but this is the main main parts of it. And that's pretty much it. You're more than welcome to get in touch if you're interested in volunteering. I'll put the link in the in the chat so you can go straight to it. Thank you very much, Carolyn. That's fab. Um, but we've got a slight change in the lineup from the, the organizer um, organisation. So I'm going to pass straight over to Amy from Age UK. If that's okay. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for having me next. Um, so yes, I'm Amy, I'm Amy Cleaver from Age UK, Coventry and Warwickshire. Um, we support the older people to keep them feeling more independent in their own homes. We have a number of services available. Um, to name a few, we have our home support service, which help people at home, housework, um, gardening, um, all sorts of tasks from taking the client out shopping or doing the shopping for them. Um, we just don't do personal care. care. Um, we have our information advice service, which helps clients with their finance difficulties, benefit checks, help with form fillings, housing options, wills, power attorney, um, probate. Uh, the list goes on um, with additional support in that aspect. Um, another service is um, quite useful to know is our dementia services and they help support uh, patients with dementia, diagnosis of dementia and their carers. So again, it could be support at home. Um, we have opened up a, a day centre um, as our pilot scheme to reintroduce the home visits there um, and um, a dementia day opportunities. Um, we also have a counselling service. This offers, um, offers support for age 65 plus who may be experiencing anxiety, stress, depression or bereavement. We have trained therapists to help through their emotions. Um, the volunteer roles that we're offering at the moment is with myself, which is uh, the Friending Coordinator. 
um, is our befriending services. Um, befriending provides companionship for isolated and lonely people, the chance to develop a new relationship. Before COVID, we offered home visits, but these are currently on hold. Um, however, we have found the telephone befriending we currently offer has been a lifeline for many and has very positive feedback and results. Um, our service covers Coventry and Warwickshire for people aged 70 years and over who are lonely and in most cases socially isolated. As much as we would like to offer befriending to everyone, we do sometimes have to prioritise those who have no family or social connections. Uh, we ask volunteers to telephone a client once a week or on a fortnightly basis for a social chat. And volunteers can be allocated to an individual who they can build a rapport with and get to know them on a more friendship basis. The reasons the service, the reason the service works so well is definitely down to the volunteers who make these connections with our clients. The service could not exist without this support and many hundreds of people would not get a call in the way that they do. The application process um, requires two references and a DBS check. There is no cost for the check. Um, this is something that we provide. Um, even if they already have one in place, we do like to do our own. Um, and if you feel that you would be, um, like to take up this role, you can do it from the comfort of your own home and the hours are flexible to suit your needs. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much, Amy. Um, we'll move straight on to uh, Mike from Brandcap. Mikey there. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm here now. I was having problems with uh, unmuting myself. Right. Um, yeah, my name's Mike Arthur. Um, I've been a volunteer with Citizens Advice for nearly 15 years. I started as a general advisor and I now recruit and train for Citizens Advice across Nuneaton, Bedworth, and Rugby. Uh, most people will know of Citizens Advice, even if you haven't used our services. Um, I would say it's a bit like McDonald's. We, we are franchisees of the central organisation. Uh, they don't own us. They don't govern us. We are a local charity with our own trustee board. Uh, and we are funded mainly from Nuneaton Borough Council, um, Nuneaton Bedworth Borough Council, I mean, uh, and Rugby Borough Council and Warwickshire County Council. Um, like most charities, we've been greatly affected by the COVID lockdowns. Um, prior to the lockdowns, we saw the majority of our clients face to face. Uh, we're now having to deal with all our clients by telephone, email or letter. Um, I mean, we hope very soon that uh, when it's safe that we can offer face-to-face -face services. So we haven't given up on face-to-face. -face. Uh, we're just having to abide by um, guidelines. Uh, we operate out of offices at Bedworth, Nuneaton and Rugby, but we also have outposts at food banks, um, children's centres um, and other community projects. So we're pretty well known in the community. Um, it won't surprise you to know that the majority of our problems that we deal with are around benefits and debt, and those problems have a, tend to have a knock-on to things like homelessness, uh, relationship breakdowns, um, and very much tend to affect the health and well-being of our clients. Um, so we make no apology for muscling in on a... Uh, a a program this afternoon that's about health. Um, we think we're very much about improving health of our clients. Um, we also issue, uh, deal with issues uh, concerning employment um, and many other neighbour disputes. That's always a fun one. I quite like doing those. Um, we're a free service. We offer the client absolute confidentiality. And most of what we do is delivered by volunteers. They're, they're at the very heart of what we do. 
Um, across our three branches, uh, we have about 60 volunteers on our rota, and we have about 20 full full time paid staff. We recruit our volunteers from all walks of life and all ages. And we like, if possible, that, that the makeup of our volunteers reflect the makeup of our clients. What, what we're doing today is talking about um, recruiting generalist advisors. Um, and we would ask that people are able to commit to two days a week 9.30 until around 2.30, but we are also willing to consider volunteers who can only offer one shift per week. The training is very extensive. Uh, it lasts about 15 weeks. It's a mix of classroom and distance learning from home. And to undertake that training, uh, volunteers would have to have either a laptop uh, or a PC or a Mac. Um, we can't deliver the training at the moment through tablets or smartphones. Uh, during the training period, uh, trainees will also get practical experience dealing with clients, but that would be under the supervision of an experienced advisor. If there's anyone wants to know more about us, then we do have a web page um, and the easiest thing to do would be to Google BRANCAB, that's B-R-A-N-C-A-B, all one word, BRANCAB, and that will take you to our website. And there's a section on volunteering on that website. The role of the advisor is to listen to the client's problem, research information from our electronic information system, and then discuss options with the client. Um, it, it is not our remit to tell clients what to do. It is only to give them options and they make the choice as to which options are most appropriate to them. Um, the amount of time that we spend then helping the client with the action part uh, depends upon the client. Um, some clients, you can just give them a leaflet, a brochure, a printout from our system and off they go. Other clients, particularly those that are more vulnerable who, or who may have mental health problems, uh, may require a lot more help and we can give that help. So if we talk about skills of an advisor, uh, the first skill would be to be a good listener and be very patient. For some of our clients, it is a very brave step to approach us and confess um, their problems. Uh, we get a lot of people who are ashamed that they're in debt or ashamed that they have alcohol or uh, gambling problems. Um, and it's a big step. So we have to be very patient. Um, we have to be team workers. We have to be able to read and write English and do basic maths. Um, and we have to be open-minded and non-judgmental and I guess enjoy helping people. Our advisors don't need to know everything. They just need to know where to find information and how to explain it in an appropriate manner to the client. But our comprehensive training enables trainees to do that. Our next intake of trainees uh, is in November. Uh, we'll be looking for eight for November. And again, we'll be looking for another eight probably in January next year. Um, during lockdown, um, a lot of our, quite a number of advisors decided to leave the service and they didn't want to work from home when that's all that we were doing. Um, they were about getting out of the house, not being at home working. And so we are short of advisors at the moment. Another way of getting in contact with us other than the web page would be through Carver. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you Mike, very much. Bro, we'll move straight on to Sonia from Family Line. Hi everyone, I'm just going to share my screen.
So you should all see the presentation. Can you someone give me a thumbs up? Good. <laughs> I am looking at this screen, so I've got two. Um, so my name is Sonia Paul. I am a senior. Um, I work for Family Action, but I actually work for one of Family Action's projects, which is called Family Line. So we'll start off by explaining what the service is. So the service is a helpline. The helpline is for any adult experiencing any sort of family issues. So they can ring into the helpline, text in, web chat, email in. So you can imagine the topics are really broad. It can range from things like relationship breakdowns, um, they might be in crisis at that time, behaviour issues with their child, even though they don't have to be parents, but we do have a high number of parents ringing. So it can be the topics are really, really broad um, because it is just a, a family helpline. They have to be an adult, so they have to be 18 years or above. Um, the helpline itself is open Monday to Friday, 9am to 9pm for service users. Now, this is the role that we are re uh, recruiting for. Um, I will explain a little bit um, later on around, around exactly what we are looking for. But what a family line volunteer will do is provide a listening ear. We don't have to know it all. That's not what it's, it's about. It's about providing the listening ear. And sometimes that is enough for people who are experiencing any sort of life challenges. Or it might be that we might need to look at if there's any other appropriate support, depending on what that service user needs at that time. Um, we can sign post internally to our services that we have, but we can also... Um, signpost to external organisations if the service user needs something a little bit more sort of specialised. However, while a volunteer is on the platform, um, there is always a staff member on the platform to support them and guide them. We have um, safeguarding procedures to, to follow. So you're not on the helpline by yourself. There's other volunteers at the same time and staff working along volunteering and working alongside you as well okay the other sort of roles let's say you will get knowledge of is the our internal roles that you can refer service users to i'm not going to go into great deal oh i've just realized ah. can you see that now properly yep yeah. <laughs> um so these are the other roles that as a family line volunteer, you can um, refer internally to our befriending, coaching and our counselling service as well. I'm not going to go into a great deal about those. So um, what are we looking for? So regarding the time commitment, um, it's four hours a week that can be broken down into a full four hour shift or it can be broken down into two hour one day and two hour a different day that that week so it depends on your on your um circumstances and on other commitments as well it is volunteering from home um so you you know, no one will actually see you. So you can relax, do it in your pajamas if you want to. <laughs> it long as you're comfortable within your own home, that's all that matters. So you won't need to go to an office. Okay. Skills that you need are good computer skills. IT skills are really essential because you our volunteers are volunteering from home. So that having computer skills is really essential. Everyone is registered into our platform and our secure system. And we can, we will guide you and support you through the system, but ultimately we need you to have good IT skills. Um, 
Our volunteers are good listeners, they're empathetic, they're non-judgmental. As you can imagine, there's lots of different topics that we come across on the helpline. You will also need access to your own telephone, but it needs to have good phone signal. Um, access to your own computer and internet connection as well while you are volunteering now. Your, we don't use your, you know, you won't be charged any extra for your data. If you're using data, you won't be charged any extra on your phone bill simply because the platform gets the charge. I've been using our secure system since 2017 and I've never been charged, but that is always a little bit of a question from, from potential volunteers. Um, you also need to look at which room will you be volunteering from? Is it suitable? You need to be in a room by yourself, a room that is confidential. So not everyone has that space within their home. Um, it might be a busy household. So it's just a think about if you are interested in this role, where within my home can I volunteer from? I think that's really important. It needs to be in a quiet, confidential room where no one else has access to the system that you will that you will be using or the same room because of the sensitive things that 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 you will be um, hearing and discussing. Um, so I mentioned the four hour commitment a week that can be broken down into two shifts, but with addition to that, we also have supervision. So one to one supervision with, with myself and the a volunteer once every 12 weeks. That is more about reflecting on any sort of calls that you've had, anything about your self-development within the service as well, any further training that you might need um, from us. So all that is discussed within the supervisions. That is also done through um, uh, Microsoft Teams. So we, we don't use Zoom, we use Microsoft Teams for, for everything that we do for the recruitment, training and supervision and just meetings, okay? So regarding training, let's say if you are interested, you would complete a application form. That application is then shortlisted. If you're successful, you will then have a virtual interview. Um, if you're successful after your interview, you will then need to participate in three training sessions. The for our next cohort, these are the training dates. But if you are interested and you can't make these three training dates, please still show your in, um, interest. We can look at putting you on our next cohort after, after this one. Um, so we just have ongoing rolling um, cohorts. Um, so you have to attend all three of these um, sessions for the next cohort. They all start at 6 p.m. and they finish at 8 p.m. Um, all done through Microsoft Teams. You, do, um, you are also um, given a e-learning package, um, which you have like three months to, to complete. So you complete that while you're an active volunteer. Um, that has actually encouraged people to become more confident, to even get employment as well, and just build their own skills. Um, once you've done the, the three training sessions, the training doesn't stop there. We then offer three one-to-one -one training sessions with myself and, and um, just you. And that is around training around the system. It's around, you'll, you'll have a practice call. So the first call that you have on the platform, you know, will be with, with me. Um, and how to use our text and web chat. So that is how the three sessions will be. And this has actually been requested from our volunteers who felt that rather going straight onto the helpline, those three training sessions really help them to feel a little bit, a little bit more confident with using the systems, following the correct procedures. Okay. Um, and the three one-to-one -one training sessions on Monday to Friday, but these sessions are during the daytime, okay? Um, and they will be week commencing the 22nd of November and week commencing the 29th. 
there is a probation period, but, um, which is a month after your first shift. But that is just to check, um, is this role meeting your expectations? Is there any further training? Are um, the procedures um, being followed and, and things like that? Okay. So what to do next? So you can contact me or you can contact um, Carver. Um, and what you will need to do is you will need to request for an application form. Um, and that application form to be on our next cohort needs to be submitted by the 10th of October. Um, because that then we'll be able to short shortlist. If you are shortlisted, your interview will take place week commencing the 18th of October. Um, all interviews, they will be shortlisted and scored and you will be informed of the outcome on the 25th of um, October. Okay, so I think that's everything from me. Uh, thanks, thank Sonia. You. Thank you I'll very stop. much. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. <clears throat> We're going to pass over to Helen Wilkinson now from Carver. Um, he's going to talk about a couple of roles um, that are available. Hi, thanks, Sarah. Um, hi, everybody. I, I recognise quite a few names from sort of the targeted testing site amongst the, the volunteers. So hi, everybody. Um, I work for Carver, so I don't work for um, one of the groups that's actually directly recruiting volunteers at the moment. Um, I've been um, recently put onto a new project, which is um, called Volunteers for Carers. And by carers, I'm talking about people who are um, unpaid carers, people who are probably at home caring for loved ones, either um, could be maybe, for example, a, you know, a partner with an older um with an elder person who has dementia, or it might be a parent with um, a child who has a disability, or it could be a, a young person. Um, is, there's, there's the Warwickshire Young Carers Group who support carers as young as six, um, who have um, some caring responsibilities for, for maybe a parent who has a disability or, or um, other sorts of, um, sort of issues like addictions, etc. cetera. So um, the project that I'm working on, um, Really, I suppose it's been set up because we've recognised that throughout the pandemic, unpaid carers have had a, have been disproportionately impacted. Um, so, for these groups of people, having your know, support networks was 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 key, and a lot of these support networks literally vanished overnight. Certainly, the face to face um, support that they were receiving. Um, some of the provision has started to reemerge now. Um, you know, we have dementia cafes running, etc. Again, but some of it hasn't, and a lot of carers are feeling quite overwhelmed at the moment. So there's a couple of groups that I've been working directly with to help them recruit volunteers, and that's um, the Carers Trust, Heart of England, and Warwickshire Young Carers um, Project. So the Carers Trust um, in Warwickshire, um, it, it works across Warwickshire and Coventry, but in Warwickshire, it supports um, adult carers, whereas Warwickshire Young Carers supports um, children as young as, as young as six, um, well, actually up to the age of 25. So both of those groups um, have recognised that, um, you know, carers need some more kind of support introducing and are looking at volunteering programmes um, to do that. So the Carers Trust at the moment are looking for, very similar to what we've, we've heard with some of the other groups, they're looking for people to do telephone befriending. Um, there's actually three separate roles that the Carers Trust are recruiting to at the moment, but they need volunteer um, volunteers to go on the, um, oh, thank you, <laughs> thanks Sarah, go, go on, um, on they, they, they provide them with um, volunteers with, um, with, with training and, and expenses, but it's about um, either delivering one-to-one -one, um, telephone calls with um, individual carers, so you would be effectively matched with a carer, um, and uh, calling the same carer maybe once a week, um, developing, um, you know, just being a friendly voice and, and, and listening to their concerns. And if, if needs be, if there's anything of particular concern, reporting it back to Carers Trust so that additional support can be put in place. Um, the other roles, there's, there's, a, there's a role called um, 
act, active, active listening. And that's more about supporting, um, supporting carers with befriending, but it's a bit like a befriending plus role. So it's, there's also um, a requirement to, to work with the carer to encourage them to be more active. Um, and again, I, I believe there's lots of training provided in order to be able to sort of do that. And it's for, for carers who want, who want that sort of support. And then finally, it's um, a role to make multiple calls to multiple carers just to do like check-ins and make sure that, that they're okay. People who, who aren't accessing regular support. So lots and lots of volunteers needed by the Carers Trust at the moment. Um, I think longer term, they're hoping to develop more kind of face-to-face -face, um, befriending roles. But at the moment, it's, it's very much focused on, um, on telephone support. And then the other group that I mentioned that um, I've been working with is Warwickshire Young Carers. So this is the group that supports um, children, young people from the age of six up to 25. Um, again, a lot of their face-to-face um, -face provision stopped over the pandemic, and they're just starting to reintroduce their, their group sessions. So these are sessions where they bring young carers together to give them some respite, to, to, get, to, to help them have a bit of fun, um, and to support each other. And these group sessions are taking place right across the county. But in particular, because of um, this session being based up in the Neaton Bedworth and, and North Warwickshire, um, they're looking at opening groups in, um, let me just tell you the locations. Um, so in Athelstan, it's in Owen Street um, and the Ratcliffe Centre. Um, in Bedworth, it's at the Life Church. And in the Neaton, it's in Wembrook. Um, so that these groups are, are due to sort of start imminently and they tend to have, um, you know, a, a small group of, of young carers of a similar age kind of meeting together, but they need volunteers to support the paid member of staff um, so that as more adults, they can, they can open up the group to, to more young carers um, and you would be helping with things like um, encouraging the young person to get involved perhaps providing transport for them to get to the session, um, perhaps helping sort of to prepare food whilst they're there, um, and just generally being an extra sort of pair of hands and, and, and a pair of eyes and ears to sort of ensure that everybody's um, you know, okay and having fun, really. So those are the roles that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, if you're interested in any of those, then, um, you can you can uh, you can go onto the Carver um, site and, and find them and, and apply directly, or you can contact either Tina and, and Ellen or myself. And I'll put my I'm conscious I haven't provided a slide with my contact details on it, but I'll put them in the chat now, so that you can all see my um, my, my email address. Um, but I'd, I you know I'd be very interested in talking to anybody that um, that would would be interested in any of those roles. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Uh, we'll go straight on to um, Amanda from the Borough Council um, regarding walk leaders. Do you have my slides there, or do I need I do. to? Share? I can get them up. I can get them up. Thanks. So just while my slides are coming up, so introduce myself. My name is Amanda Campbell Barker. I work for Nuneaton and Bedworth Borough Council. Um, and I'm in the sports development team uh, department and we're known as Active for Life. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so one of the areas that we um, have volunteering is for um, the Ramblers Wellbeing Walk. So some of you may have heard of it before as the um, Health Walks. Um, uh, used to be known as Walking for Health. Um, Ramblers have uh, taken it on a few years ago and they've rebranded it. It's called Ramblers Walks now. So what we're looking for is volunteer walk leaders. Um, we do provide training and it's training that's um, organised by the Ramblers. However, I'm a trainer, so I will train um, all the volunteers and it's normally around about five six hours and sometimes it's a full day or we split it into two depending on um, availability of of individuals so it might be in the daytime it could be in the evening I just cater it to to who can attend um, the reason we need volunteers is we have nine walks across the Neaton and Bedworth and they're from Monday to Friday at various different times and the walks are normally from around about one or one and a half hours depending on which walk it is um, and 
the, the role is very much about, um, you know, walkers go on it because a lot of them are older people. Some of them have lost spouses. Some of them have had maybe operations and they need to get back into a little bit of exercise. Some people are just lonely and they just want to connect with people. Um, we have a whole variety, um, but <clears throat> we just need walk leaders to actually um, come alongside them. We need the register being done. We need someone to lead the walk. So normally we'll have two walk leaders. So we'll have one at the front who's leading the walk, but still um, chatting to the walkers as they go. One at the back again, making sure everyone's happy. Um, and it's it's a very um, moderate walking. It's not it's not it's called under ramblers, but it's well being. So it's not walking at great speeds it's taking your time but having time to you know walk and talk um, and chat with individuals um, so <clears throat> um, it, it really is about that social angle so following the walk most of the walks will finish at a cafe so for instance Bedworth um, walk which is on a Wednesday at 10 30 they will start at the mayor's cafe they'll do their walk for about an hour hour 15 and then they'll finish at the cafe and then they'll socialize um, together so not everyone will have had time to chat with each other because people walk at different paces um, but when they get back to the cafe then they can socialize so it's very much about a social angle so if you enjoy doing a little bit of exercise uh, and um you know, chatting with people, this is perfect for you. Also, we've got a walking buddy, which is a new thing that I've introduced because I've had a lot of organisations and people have phoned up um, for their relatives or for their friends wanting someone to come alongside someone to be a buddy walker. Um, and just to take them out on the walk. So um, it might sometimes just mean turning up at the walk um, and then meeting the person there, or it might mean going along and picking them up uh, and bringing them um, to the walk as well. So, uh, and it's exactly, um, it's similar to the volunteer walk leader, only you won't be responsible for filling out a register um, or sort of having to watch out for everyone else. It's just for that one particular person. Um, and then we also need administration support. So um, in order that we get some funding to do the, um, the Ramblers Wellbeing Walks or the Ramblers get funding, um, we need to obviously show that we're getting enough people coming along, um, showing what sort of conditions people have got, how it's benefiting them. So we need an administrator to actually fill out the, the database that we have to do for each of the walks that we have. Uh, and then we've got photography and videography. So it might be um, that you fit into one of the other categories, but you've actually got a real keen interest in the other two, photography and videography, or you might just have an interest in either of those. So um, we, we like to try and take photos of different seasons, um, of the walkers walking, um, or we like to put together a video um, and put it on social media or even do one. We've done them in the past where we can share them on um, social media and the website, but just it just actually shows um, you know, what walking fat um, the Ramblers Wellbeing Walks are all about um, and just trying to promote it for people uh, to come along. Next slide. Thank you. Um, we also do um, a number of events in Nuneaton and Bedworth. So we've got our Nuneaton, five, Nuneaton and Bedworth 5K, we've got our um, Nuneaton 10K, and we've got something called a limpage. Now, a limpage is for older um, people who live in sheltered accommodation or resident, uh, residential accommodation. And it's kind of like a mini Olympics. We started it um, uh, the year before... Um, 2012 and it's been going ever since obviously we didn't do it last year and we haven't done it this year yet um, <clears throat> but it's um it's a really fun event where um we get lots of teams from the different sheltered accommodations and all come together whether it's a sports hall whether it's a social club um, and they just compete um at different activities but we're always looking for people to come and help out you know just to connect with everyone um and just to be um 
just to be a bit of a helping hand. You don't need to know about the sports or anything, but it's just a helping hand. Um, but our other two events, we need marshals, people to do registration, people to help set up and break down. Again, people taking photos, doing videos. So these are just general things that are just going to be uh, a one day event. Um, it's either in the morning or the afternoon, and we just need help at these different um, activities. Um, next slide, please. And then we've got other opportunities that we have just generally for the team. So we need a general office administration. Um, if you love doing that administration side of things, we have lots and lots of uh, opportunities uh, to take part in um, doing that. Um, we take on research um, assistance every year. Normally we get someone from um, a university or a college, but if you've got an interest in that, we always have to people to do um, research for us. Um, photography again, marketing. Um, we've got a marketing department, but uh, they're always really stretched. So if you've got an interest in that, if you're doing a course in it and you want to get some work experience, you know, we can offer the opportunity and the same with graphics as well. Um, the same sort of thing, just lots of opportunities um, that we can provide. And final slide, just to introduce myself again. So I'm the Sport and Physical Activity Officer. This is my contact details, um, my email and number. But again, you can go through Carver or you can email me direct to ask for more information about any of these activities. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Um, and finally, I've got Isabel from Health Watch. Hi, um, I haven't got a presentation, so I'm just going to talk to you. OK, um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background um, about Health Watch in case you don't know. Um, Health Watch Warwickshire are the Health Watch England. Every um, county in Warwickshire, in, every county in England has a Health Watch. Um, well, sorry, we're an independent service um, for everybody who uses health and social services, um, social care services. The role is to support people with issues that relate to any health and social care by advising, talking, listening to people. Um, signposting is a very important part of what we do. Um, so we receive feedback either by email or people ring us. Um, obviously, before COVID, you know, I'm an engagement and outreach officer. We went out to where people were and just talked to people, community centres, various events, things like that. Obviously, it, that's had to change, but we are hoping to get back to doing that as soon as we can. Um, so um, we helped people help people with any concerns they've got about health and social care. Um, if they want to make a complaint, um, if, they, if something happened to themselves or a family member they're not happy with and they want to know how to make a complaint, it's quite a complicated process. So we can help them with that. We can signpost them um, to people who they can um, talk to. Uh, we can refer them to a voice ability for an advocates, advocacy service if that's what they need. Um, and um, all the feedback that we receive from people um, is um, how we build this picture of how local services are doing. Um, and then all this information is gathered up and it's um, passed on to the uh, decision makers, the commissioners, people like that, who um, can then hopefully improve the service. They take on board what we're saying and they, will, they can help improve services for everybody. So that's basically in a small nutshell, that's, that's our role. So with regard um, to volunteers, our current volunteers, um, are what we call authorised representatives. So part of another part of our role is to go into care homes um, and we do what we call an enter and view. So we'll go into a care home and we will talk to um, the uh, residents and to the staff of a care home. Um, and then we do a report, which is then published on our website. We work quite closely with the Care, um, care Quality Commission on this. We don't do the same sort of inspections as they do. We don't look into um, audit trails or, or, or patient notes, things like that. It's, it's, it's just going in and it's just seeing, looking around, seeing what's, what's going on in the care home and talking to people to find out what it's like to, to live there, basically. Um, now, for that, they have to have quite um, a, a, an extensive bit of training um, because there's obviously health and safety and all sorts of things involved. 
when you're going into into somebody's home, which is what it what it what it amounts to. Um, so we're not actually recruiting for those, but we will be later on when we get back to doing um, our uh, enter and view. So what we're looking for now with regards to um, volunteers um, is to um, have people who can do some mystery shopping for us. So it's very flexible. They can do it in their own time. So um, we're currently looking at a piece of work around GP access. There's been a lot of issues with GP access lately. People not being able to get access to GPs when they need them. Um, so um, what we do is what we're looking for is people who can do some mystery shopping, can just call them up or even look look on the websites um, and um, do some mystery shopping on the websites to find out what information is actually on websites. We've been finding that um, GP surgery websites are very varied in what information they give to people um, and it's not always that helpful. So um, we're looking for people who can do some mystery shopping. So all they need then is, is a phone um, and, and then they'll just ring up a list of um, GP surgeries or they'll look on their websites and they'll just write as little little bits of information on what they found so we can collate all that information. It's, it's stuff like that that are extremely valuable for us, but very time consuming. Um, also, um, we're looking at um, connecting with as many people just out in the community as possible um, to be sort of ambassadors, if you like. Um, so they're going to be people going out and about, um, listening to what other people are saying and then feeding back to us. So it's not a structured volunteering role as, as a lot of um, colleagues here have been saying, but it's just about um, when you're talking to friends, family, when you're going out and about anybody, um, just to, if, if you hear anything that, that's a concern or that anybody's got a concern about, if they can just go on our website or you can stick it on our website feedback, um, that information is, is invaluable to us. The only way we're going to find out what's going on um, in, in, in Warwickshire is by, and by listening to patients' voice, by, by getting that, that information. And the only way we can get it is if people tell us about it. As I say, we, we, we can't go out and do engagement as we would normally do. So we're relying on people to give us that information. Um, and what else have I got to tell you? Um, yes, our, G, our volunteers at the moment through pandemic have been doing a piece of work for us, ringing up care homes because we couldn't go in to visit them. They've been ringing up and just talking to the managers and finding out what's working well, what's not working well, you know, how they're coping, how their staff are coping. Um, and we've had extremely good feedback. We've done, there's a report on our website from that. Um, the care home managers were really happy that somebody was actually taking the time to listen to them. Um, so again, you know, that, that's, the, that's the kind of thing that the volunteers do. And we, we couldn't have managed without our volunteers during pandemic. They, 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 have been, they have been really good. But we're always looking for more people. And as I say, it's, it's very varied. It's very um, flexible, depending on what project we, we're doing. Um, we're going to be doing one um, looking at um, the rights of people with learning difficulties with regards to health and social care. That's coming up. So um, we'll be needing people to help us with that. Um, and so there's no set commitment. It, like I say it's quite flexible. You can fit in with what around what you're doing already. All you need to do is be have an interest in health and social care, enjoy talking to people, um, and have a phone. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay, Rosie, I've seen your comment in the chat. Do you want to have a couple of minutes just to talk about your opportunities? Just, just, just a couple of minutes, but. <laughs> Wow, there's nothing like being put on the spot, is there? <laughs> Sorry, if not, I can just I can, I can share the details from the chat if you'd rather. Um, it can do, or people can read. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be unkind and put, because Wendy, our, uh, our volunteer coordinator, is also on the call, that way I won't put her on the spot. Um, but all of our um, email addresses for, for volunteer contact with the trust are generally our name dot not so you'll be able to get Wendy from that so it'll be Wendy dot not at Warwickshire Wildlife Trust for more information specifically about volunteering. Um, volunteering wise we have a huge number of, of opportunities across the trust whether it's um, working in the visitor centre, um, 
sort of face to face and working with with people in in um customer services um style um we've also got nature force and other conservation groups that are out and out carrying out <laughs> vital 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 work for the trust supporting our uh, our reserves team my specific project works with people who are experiencing poor mental health and well-being so to improve mental health and well-being by engaging them with nature and getting them out in an inner safe space and breaking down social isolation um, we are partnered with coventry mind coventry and warwickshire mind um, and run sessions at an allotment in spawn end where we have a a mental health, senior mental health support worker um, from MIND. In addition to that, we run, and this is in the chat group, six to eight week bushcraft courses. Um, and I also run um, monthly walks. So across within Coventry and then additionally across Warwickshire. So Amanda, it'd be good to, to link up um, or, or to, to know a little bit more about what you do in addition to the, the presentation. Um, they are all of those courses are great for people who haven't yet um, got the confidence to go straight into volunteering roles. We've got a lot of people who have, as a result of attending the eight the QD eight week bushcraft courses, who have gone on to volunteers, not just within the trust, um, but to take up a, a variety of, sort of volunteering offer opportunities or have returned to work. Um, and then, uh, yeah, enabled them to, to sort of think about tackling application forms and, and such like. That was very on the spot. I don't know whether that's uh, <laughs> was all quite garbled. Um, but if anybody has any questions or or wants to get in touch, please do um, with with myself or Wendy. That's, that's great. Thank you, Rosie. Um, Bab, I've got a uh, health exchange as well. I don't know if that was on my list. Was that meant to be on my list, Ellen? Look at Ellen. Uh, yes, it is on you. It should be on your list. I've sent the agenda yesterday. It's Nikki here. Um, my colleague Jackie was going to do a presentation. Um, Tina added it onto the uh, agenda. Okay. Oh God, if, if, you, if you're able to do a quick presentation, you're more than welcome to, to finish us off. Yeah. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Wait, hang on. Over to Jackie. Okay, share. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, okay. Uh, wait, I can make it bigger. Hang on. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Jacqueline. I'm a community social prescriber from Health Exchange, and I'm here to talk about our voluntary um, vol volunteering opportunity. So I, so the uh, volunteering opportunity will be um, volunteers that work alongside social prescribers and link work workers within North Warwickshire, rural North Warwickshire, Coventry, and rugby. So um, what is Health Exchange? Health Exchange is a health and wellbeing um, service. Um, because of time, I'm just going to whiz through, through this. Um, we were formed in Birmingham um, in 2006, and our mission is to support people um, within, within the community. Um, so our workforce of lo local people is trained to deliver services has grown substantially. Our portfolio of services has diversified. Our partnerships and collaborations with external organisations has multiplied and our geographic reach is now international. So we have four services. We have type 2 diabetes management, health and wellbeing, um, mental health and wellbeing, social prescribing and data services. So you're probably wondering, for those of you that know, don't know what social prescribing is, um, social prescribing is a non-medical approach to improving people's overall health and well-being. Health Exchange is commissioned by the NHS and Coventry Warwickshire Clinical Commissioning Group to deliver um, this free service across Coventry Rugby and North Warwickshire. So in a nutshell, um, social, social prescribers support individuals using a holistic approach um, and person-centred approach to access services that are important for that individual, such as joining community groups, activities and um, signposting or referring them into services that can help them with things such as housing and finance, isolation, loneliness, bereavement, um, and so forth. Um, 
so we're currently looking for volunteers um, the volunteers will work along like, like I said before the volunteers will work alongside the link workers and community social prescribers the different they do the same thing but the difference between a link worker and community social prescribers is that the link workers are based within the GP, GPs and PCNs whereas the community social workers um, primarily work within the community um, as a social as a um, volunteer um, you'll be supporting clients with befriending, shopping, gardening, housework, cooking, interpreting, um, driving to appointment, odd, odd jobs, um, collecting medication, and accompany, accompanying um, to appointments. So um, to volunteer with us, you have to be 18 and over and willing to complete a DBS, provide two references. And if you need more information, you can speak to my manager, Nicola, and her number's there as well. Um, yeah, so I hope that was quick enough for you guys. <laughs> that was amazing. Apologies, Jackie. I'm really sorry to go on my list, but that was an amazing little stop tour. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, no, that's fab. So um, if anyone, is there anything that anyone's got really pressing questions or comments or anyone else that I've missed off? I'm hoping not. Fabulous, no. Um, well, thank you to all the organisations that have come today. Um, we will be, it was mentioned in the chat, but we will be sharing all the contact details um, and hopefully the presentations as well, if that's okay. We'll make sure that's okay before we share them, but hopefully share them as well, because obviously the contact details will be in there as well. Um, so I think that's everything, unless I'm forgetting anything. Ellen, is there anything else I need to mention? Uh <laughs> A, a huge thank you to everybody involved today and I really hope that the volunteers who see this you can just see the real spread of of opportunities and and there's some really exciting opportunities in there and I think people just don't realize what's out there so hopefully volunteers that have taken part today have, have sort of had their minds blown by by all of this but also then because we're going to record it and put it on the website it will attract Again, it'll it'll other volunteers will be able to come to these the organisations, you know, and hopefully it'll be a real success. Definitely, yeah, absolutely. It's amazing to see just the breadth and um, you know range of volunteer opportunities that are available. So it's absolutely fantastic, yeah. And as Ellen said, we've we've recorded this, so hopefully, fingers crossed, if technology all works, we'll have the video and um, we'll be able to promote the roles, kind of virtually as well as um, using our volunteer connect as well so thank you very much to all speakers thank you to our volunteers that have attended and um hopefully we'll see you at another recruitment event that we're, we'll be planning soon <laughs> thank you very much have a lovely rest of your day thank you